Genesis chapter number 4. <clears throat> if you'd like to stand in the reverence of the reading of God's word, I know this is Sunday school, but it'll be all right. In verse number 25, and it said, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we love you today. And Lord, we seek to honor you and praise you. I'm thankful, Lord, this morning that there's a place that's still open today. God, of hearing all the stories of people closing, God, I'm thankful to God that the preaching of thy word is still going out. The light to shine to this old dark world of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is wonderful, which is mighty, which is powerful. And God, we love you and we seek to praise you. In Jesus' sweet holy name, amen. All right, I want to preach to you, teach to you whatever you want to say on this one thought this morning, some people we need. Some people we need. <clears throat> we live in a day where, you know, a lot of people running today are running fearful. Uh, what I'd like to tell them, the people that are running fearful about what's going on, turn your TV off for a little while. Stop watching the stinking news about what's going on. I mean, I mean, they're only going to tell you the most severe cases. They're not going to tell you all the mild cases, which is 85%. I mean, we need some people today that are still focused on God, still wanting to do what God wants them to do, still wanting to come to church, still wanting to, to continue telling people about what he's done for them. We don't need people running fearful and backing up. We need people that are pressing forward. We must live in the day that we live. You think this is bad, this is just the beginning. And in order for us to go forward, we must be close to him. We must live a close life in how that we live. And I want to show you a little bit out of here, out of Adam and Eve. Oh, what a different place to be. But Adam and Eve... I mean, Adam and Eve, you think about Adam and Eve, you think of the, 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 the first two that were perfect. You think of the perfect garden. You think of the place that God put them, that they were in perfection, and, and they were able to walk. I mean, Adam was able to walk with God in the cool of the morning every day. I mean, God, hey, he had fellowship, he had communion, he had that relationship. He had all of those things, but we also think of that first sin. The first time that, that we find Adam and Eve, I mean, well, actually we find Adam. The Bible said here that God called them Adam. Yeah. Chapter number 5. I, I didn't realize that to reading a little bit later about how that Adam, in, in the beginning of sin, realized for the first time that him and his wife were divided. Because the Bible said here in chapter number 5, that the God created man and, and, and male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. And Eve never received her name till after the sin. In that place of division, in that place of dividing, Adam said, all right, she's the mother of all living. I'm going to call her name Eve. Yeah. I mean, Adam, in the beginning of this chapter, in the, in the beginning of the Bible, begins to realize the division that he has caused with God through his own relationship with his wife. They never had a, 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 a division. They never had an angry moment. I mean, they were perfect. I mean, their communion was perfect. But when she was deceived, the Bible said she was, uh, <coughs> she was deceived here in chapter number three, uh, that the devil deceived her. He woefully deceived her into thinking that she was going in the right way and that the devil used uh, the word of God to deceive her. He said, hath God said, uh, he said, you shall not surely die. He began to question God and God's authority and therefore brought about a woman that said, all right, I, it looks good. It's good to the eyes. It's good to be eaten. It's good to make one wise. And when she ate, she was divided from her husband. And then he ate. And so they begin to realize, I mean, a lot of times we don't think a lot about what's going on with Adam and Eve. We don't break down into, their, into what's going on. We don't break down in their life, 
It is there. We can find what, the things that we need to know. I mean, here we find after the first sin, we find the first guilt. We find the first shame. We find the first nakedness. We find the place where they realize that something had gone wrong and yet they have not realized the, 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 the punishment of what they've done. They realize the guilt of it. So the Bible said they, they made them fig clothes, they made them uh, aprons out of fig leaves and, and they sewed them together and they tried to cover up their self. And we find here not only that, but we find the first mention uh, of the gospel of how God would, would bring about life to us through that clothing of the skins. He made, he took two, he took skins uh, of an animal, uh, which was probably a lamb, took skins of an animal, a lamb, and, and, and took that skin and made them clothes and covered their nakedness or covered their shame. I'm thankful for the gospel that it covers our shame. That it washes away our sin. That the blood of Christ would cleanse us from all of our... I mean, when God looks at our account, if you're saved this morning, when God looks at your account and he looks at what you've done in the past, he don't see it. It's been washed out. It's been washed away. It's been cleansed. It's been taken care of. So we see Adam and we see the fact that he was clothed with skins. Not only that, he's, we see the first time that they realize the fact of what their sin's going to cost them when God says, all right, shut the door and put them out. That's the first time they've experienced a break in the relationship with God. I mean, could you imagine what's going on in their mind and in their heart and then what's going on in them? And I'm laying the groundwork to get somewhere here. So we see here in chapter number four, we see that Adam and Eve, they, they, they come together, they conceive... Some people say that Adam, uh, Cain and Abel were twins, and that's fine. I mean, it does say that she bare uh, his brother Abel. It didn't say that she conceived him, but, but uh, that she had Cain and Abel. Cain means possessor. Cain means a, a spear bearer or a leader. He was, the, he was the possessor. He was the one to take. Abel means breath. Abel means vanity. Abel realized through his own name something that Solomon figured out a whole lot of years later that a life without God is vanity. Amen. His word means breath. It reminds me of the breath of God. It reminds me, it reminds me of life. It reminds me of those things. You got both sides. You got vanity and you got breath. And, and he realizes a life without God is vanity. But the breath of God is life. And he realizes he needs those things. But Cain, he's the opposite. He's the other end of the spectrum. He wants to get. He wants to take. He wants to have. He wants to accumulate. He wants to build his own religion. He wants God to be pleased with his work. He wants God God to come his way so they lay out these two different lifestyles but we must remember who is leading these lifestyles right. Bible told Adam in, in chapter number 3 he said you're going, to eat of, you're going to eat of the ground you're going to till the ground and the, by the sweat of thine brow and you're going to till the ground so Adam had to, had to learn as he was been taking care of the garden he had to learn to till the ground and start seed and start planting and start bringing forth life and so he began to learn those things, or maybe he already knew those things. But Cain did not. So all of Adam's life, I mean, you, you think about Adam and Eve, there was no cities. There was no towns. There, there was no materialism. There was no, uh, you get all this and all that and all this. Their lifestyle was one thing. Their life was their family. We need to get back to that. Well, we're not so busy about our family that we care about our love, that our youngins and our, and our family, that we're not so busy to have a career in all of these things, the, the, the materialism and the bigger houses and bigger things. We need to get back and be like a people of Adam and Eve where the only thing they had was Cain and Abel. And Cain tilled the ground and Abel kept the sheep. What does that remind me of when they keep the sheep? Throughout the ages, the, the home has been taken care of the, by the wife. She was the one that always sewed the clothes. The Bible never says here in chapter number 4 that they ever ate those sheep. The only time in the Bible that you'll find, I believe it is in chapter number, it is after the flood that God gives them the command to eat the, to eat the animals. He told them that you would eat of the herbs and the trees. You would eat of the ground. That's what he told them to eat of. The fruit, the fruit of the trees, the ground. They never said to eat of those things. So why was he keeping the sheep? Because he was keeping the clothes that would provide for their families. 
They needed those animals to put clothes on their back. They needed those animals to remove the guilt and the shame and the, and the things that of nakedness that had come because of the choice of Adam and Eve back over there in the garden. And Abel's living that lifestyle. Cain's living the other lifestyle. He's, he's providing for his family, but he is taking it in in a different way. I mean, we, feel, we see here first in the Bible, we see the first division of the home. I believe Eve was raising Abel, and I believe that, uh, that Adam was, was raising Cain based on what they lived and based upon their name. And not only that, based upon what, it, what uh, here in the Bible, we find that a tradition was set aside that the woman would name the child. You find that many times when they would name their children. When Rachel named, the only time you, you find beginning that, that, that something was changed, you find it with Rachel when she was dying. She said she called him Benoni and, and, and Israel said, no, I'm going to call him Benjamin. But every time the women would name their children. And look at what she said here. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seat. Now let's get back to that mindset of laying that groundwork. What about with Cain and Abel? Where, where do you think Adam and Eve were? I mean, they have spent their life putting into them what they know and what they've learned and what they've seen. And, and, and these are the beginning things. I mean, the things that they have learned are very, very, very simplistic. Uh, and, and they've learned these things and then they put all this time into their sons to grow them up to be men and to raise them. I mean, that's all they had. There wasn't a bunch of other people around. I mean, all that they could turn to was these two uh, young men that God had given them. So where do you think they were when they took that sacrifice? When Abel sacrificed that lamb and went down to that altar and, and gave it to God and, and Cain brought of the first fruits of the ground and brought what he could what he could work for and laid it there. And where do you think they were when God revealed to them who he had he, who he was well pleased with? I mean, the Bible calls Abel righteous by the the witness of his sacrifice. He is claimed to be righteous. Yeah. Cain is claimed to be wicked. Yeah. Bible said, and they went in the way of Cain, being an evil way. They went in the wrong way. They went in the way of Balaam. It talks about it over there in Jude. And, and, and we find here in the Bible, we find the first time that they've experienced death. Yeah. Uh, what Eve was lied about in the garden, what, what, what the, the, the devil told her would not happen, she gets to experience it for the first time in her son. Yeah. Think about those things. We don't think about these things a lot of times. But the first death, the first sorrow, the only person you have that you've raised is dead now. And Cain, the Bible says, says here in verse number 13, Cain said, the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. The Bible said in verse 16, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Could you imagine you're trying to raise your children to, to, to be in the presence of the Lord, to get back to that place. I believe they were trying to raise their family, but by what she told her next son would be, he said that God hath appointed me another seed. What does that mean? That takes me back to there. When, when they're listening to God talk to the serpent and said, Serpent, the, your seed and her seed are going to be in an enmity between each other. And the one is going to, is going to, is going to bruise your head and you're going to bruise his heel. They're looking back to the promise. They're looking back to where God will bring about a, the, 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 the answer for the problem that they've caused. So we need some people in this day. Cain, Abel, uh, Abel wanted uh, the heavenly promise. Cain wanted the earthly dominion. How do you know that? Because of the way he lived when he left. He wanted a city. He's the first one to build a city. He's the first one to, 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 to have all these worldly things, which they're not bad. I mean, the Bible talks about uh, that he had children that had organs and things, but that's, that's the opposite end of the spectrum. You've got to remember that they produce these organs and these things for a worldly intent. 
And that Abel wanted the, the wanted a Messiah. He wanted a giver. Abel wanted to become Abel became a giver. Cain became a taker. The divided house. We see the sorrow of childbirth. We we, we see the death of Abel. We we see the the great need that they need. They 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 realize we have a need for a seed to bruise his head for what he's done to our family. Amen. So let's look at that. I don't know how much time I got, but we're going to try to get a few men, see a few things here. Seth. Seth is this seed. Seth is this bringing back of the home. I mean, could you imagine what happened between Adam and Eve with the fact of Cain and Abel? How, why did it take them? Uh, uh, why did it take them so many years to have Seth? The Bible said in the days of Adam, after he, Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. The Bible said that Adam called his name Seth. They were both in agreement on the name of the fact that this would be our substitute for the fact of what happened with Cain and Abel. There would be a substitute that would be the seed that would bring about a people that would bring the promise of God that he would bruise the serpent's head. And then we see this family. The Bible claims this family that this, that, that Seth, he was the substitute. Seth called on God desiring his presence. How do you know that? Because in his son, his son was the beginning of men to call upon the name of the Lord. He was the lines of the son of God. A lot of people try to say that in Genesis chapter number 6 that angels came down from heaven and, and got with the children, uh, got with the women there of the earth and they had children together and that's foolishness. Uh, but the Bible claims that it was the sons of God, the sons of the line of Seth. Seth became that line, that seed line, that line that would bring forth the Messiah. We need some of those people. We need some of those whosoevers. Oh, the longing to see people get saved in this day. Yeah, sure. To become like unto, uh, the Bible says, in, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. But don't ever forget Psalms 145 and verse 18. The Bible said the Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him to all that call upon him in truth. Right. That's what's happened in our day. A lot of people ain't called upon him in truth. And they've been deceived and they walked away lost and they don't come back to church and, and they don't want to live for God and they don't want to do God's way. But we need some people that want to live for God. We need some people that, that really called upon his name, really got saved, really got born again, really got in the faith, really wanted to do his will. <coughs> Not only do we need a people that are saved, but we need a people that love shepherds. Abel was a shepherd. Abel was a tiller of Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain despised his brother's livelihood. Cain despised him. How do you know? The Bible said, Where is Abel thy brother? He said, I know not. Am I am I am I my brother's keeper? They called him a keeper. They called him, the, 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 it's a picture of this first shepherd, the first pastor, the first people that would have, we would have pastors come from this, from these, uh, from these pictures that we find in the Bible. What we need today is some people that back their pastor. If you could ever do anything, you could go to your pastor today and say, thank God that you kept the doors open no matter what everybody else did. Thank God for having a shepherd. Thank God. We need some people that love preaching. That's not afraid to be preached to. That's not afraid to be preached about their sin. That's not afraid to have their life be different than what it is now. I want to be closer to him. I don't want to be further away. Thank God for preachers that will preach the word. But thank God for saved people that love preaching. We need some people that love the shepherds. That love preaching. Not only do we need some men that love preaching or some, fam some men and women that love preaching, but we need some people like Canaan. We're looking down the line of their family. They had Enos. Enos means man. That just means they'd started the line of the, 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 the ones that would believe and get to Enos, but then he had a son. His name was Canaan. You know what Canaan means? A fixed dwelling place. I thank God for a fixed dwelling place. 
Psalms 84 and verse number 3. The Bible said, Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. I mean, he's talking about here, he's talking about the sparrow found a place to, to house her nest. Oh me, we need a dwelling place in this day. We need some people that want to raise their family in the house of God. We need some people that are like the sparrow that have a dwelling place. They want their dwelling place to be here. We have got so misgathered in this day about what they what we need to do with our life. We think that this is the last option. This shouldn't be the last option. This should be the first option. This should be the one we ain't going to mark off. This is the one we're not going to separate from. This is the one that we're going to keep holding on to. It's our fixed dwelling place. I want to be like Cain. I want to have a fixed dwelling place. What was his dwelling place? Calling upon the name of the Lord. You can go anywhere. Now they're closing them down. You can't go to a theater now. That wasn't important. We've got so many things misgathered. This is where our family's at. If you're saved today and you're here, you're my family. You're my brothers. You're my sisters. Though I love my family of this world, I have five brothers and five sisters and have confidence not in one of them that they're saved. They say they are. But they don't live it. And I love them. But in the end, if they don't turn to Christ, they're not my family. In the end, who is going to be my family? The people that are going to be with Christ. That are in the body. That are part of the bride. We need to have our fixed dwelling place. Cain, the opposite end of the spectrum, didn't have a fixed dwelling place. He dwelled in the land of Nod, the land of drifting, the land of sliding, the land of homelessness, the land of worldliness. He lived in a place far away from the presence of the Lord. The last thing we need to do is put locks on the door and just shut him out. But this is our dwelling place. Put your nest down. Take the time and put your nest down, ladies, with your children in the house of God and to have them preach to and not be worried about that they get preached to. This contemporary world today is trying to make their people hate preaching, hate people getting loud, hate people getting excited, hate people just sitting back and giving them the word of God and tell them what it says. I got family heading that way and they, they look at me and they say, I, I, I will never step foot in a Baptist church again. We need some people that are fixed. The land of Nod, you think that's the better place out there in this world. You just keep on sliding. But I want to set my nest down. A bird takes time in fixing her nest. She takes time of picking out the right twigs. I've seen some birds come along with a little cardinal. We'd watch birds. My wife loves cardinals. And, and you could watch that cardinal and she'd, she'd tear off a bark off a tree and it wasn't just right for what she needed and she'd drop it. We need some families like that. So that there's some things in our life that we don't need. But the one thing we need is that fixed dwelling place. Put your sparrows in the, in the, in, in, up in the... Uh, uh, up in the rafters of the house of God. Not only do we need uh, a fixed dwelling place like Canaan, but we need some people like Mahaliel. That means praise of God. We need some people that ain't afraid to praise God. I'm telling you what. People get so excited about the little football game with the, with the grass and the chalk lines and big old fat men running across the, the lines and knocking each other half dead and, and all those things. You may have your heyday and all that, fun, but there ain't one football that ever, ever, football player that ever did anything for me. They never crossed that touchdown line for me. They never did any touchdown or anything for me. But there was one back in the dark days of my life. There was one that was holy. There was one that was righteous. There was 
was one that could see every sin that I've ever done and still wanted to come by my way. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know why he would ever come by me. I used to be the blasphemer that would curse people, that would curse God with my life and tell everybody that I knew him and I didn't know who he was. I didn't know anything about him. I didn't know about his power. I didn't know about his strength. I didn't know about his resurrection. I didn't know what it means to be a new creature. But oh, happy day. There was one day when God came by my way. There was one day when I got excited about what God had done for me. I'm telling you, God did something for me. This world has their shouting times, but it's not dead for me today. I'm not going to just sit back and be quiet and let the world go by and not let them know that Jesus saves. You say, how does that tell anything about what me? Tells a lot. We'll talk about everything under the sun, but we get the opportunity to hear about what he's done for us. We just sit back studied. We need some people like Mahaliel that praise of God. They know how to praise. We need some people that know how to praise, but also know how to keep the right music. Jubal. He's a stream. He's the one that started the wicked worldly music. He's, his name means stream. He's the one that, that, that came up with the organ and, the, and those things and, and, and invented those things. Such as handle the harp and the organ. And God don't have a problem with the harp or organ. God has a problem with how they play them. So he came up with the worldly music. We need to be people like Mahaliel that's not afraid to, to keep the right music. Amen. Sitting in our radio stations, if we were to sit down and let the preacher sit down in our car, would he be happy? Mm. That's just the preacher. That ain't talking about God. Right. We need some people like Mahaliel that's willing to praise God Amen. and keep the right praise, yeah. the right songs of Zion. We find here the next person we need to have. I'm, I'm short out, almost out of time. But we find here the, the next person that with some people that we need. We need some people like Enoch. Yeah. Enoch means dedicated. Yeah. Yeah. Enoch means committed. Yeah. Enoch means devoted, faithful. Yeah. Not only did Seth have a son named Enoch, but Cain had a son named Enoch. Yeah. And Enoch of Cain was dedicated to the way of Cain. Enoch was going in the way of Cain mentioned in Jude there in verse number 11. He was, he was dedicated to continue the worldly lifestyle, the worldly place of drifting, the worldly sliding, the worldly place of leaving the presence of God. But we had a man named Enoch that was wanting to be, be in God's presence. We had a man named Enoch that wanted, wanted to be right close to him, that they wanted to walk with him. The Bible said, and Enoch walked with God after he began Methuselah 300 years, and they got son and daughters, and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. We need some people today that walk with God. I mean you can do everything under the sun out there in this world but there is something very special about a prayer closet. There's something very special about dedicated time to God that outreaches all the other dedicated pleasures that you have. If you go fishing with more time than you spend with God, get it fixed out straight. He needs to be preeminent. He needs to be on the throne. He needs to take up our time. He is special. He is worthy. He is holy. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is worthy to be praised. We need some faithful, dedicated people. Not only that... In a few more minutes, we need a man of the sword. Yeah. Bible said Methuselah. Yeah. <coughs> His name means man of the sword. Yeah. Methuselah was the one that, that held the line till the flood. Yeah. Yeah. Bible said he, he died in the very year of the flood. Yeah. A lot of people think Noah didn't have nobody around, but Methuselah is still around. Yeah. He may not have been doing too much work at 969, but... Uh, <coughs> He still held the line. He still held the line that we could get down to Noah, which, which means comfort and rest. 
the promises of God that God would bring comfort and rest. I'm looking for that day of comfort and rest where the trials of this life where the, the viruses of today, where the sicknesses, where the cancer, where the heartaches, where the pain, where the, the agony in this old body, this old groaning of having a new body. I'm looking for the day of rest. But there's got to be somebody to hold the line till we get there. Yeah. Somebody's got to hold the line. Somebody's got to fight for some things. We've got to fight for what's right. We've got to fight for our music. We've got to fight for our Bible. We've got to fight for prayer time. We've got to fight to keep our nest in the house of God. We've got to fight. We've got to fight for some things. Hold the line. Hold the line. Because the line's slipping in a lot of places. Lamech means powerful. Carried on the line to stand against sin. He named, he named his own son in the basis of the curse that God had placed upon Adam because of his sin. He named his son and said, because of the, 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 here Noah, Noah will be the one that brings rest. This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Was he right? The Bible said he was because the Bible said God would never curse the ground for man's sake. They held the line. Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Don't ever, don't ever let this world get you to despise preaching. You start despising the man of God, you need to come to the altar. If he's preaching you the Bible, whether you like it or not, or whether he's in your where he's in your eggshells or whatever, stepping on some things that are cracking in your life, my friend, he's got the right. He's got God on his side, and you ought to stand with him. Fight for some things. We need some families that'll fight. Don't give in. Don't give in. Don't let them scare you out. We need some men. We need some people on this day. Let's pray and I'll be done. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for, for being allowed to preach your word. <sighs> Father, I'm thankful for everyone that's here this morning. May we take thy word. Take thy truth. Lord, if there's some area that may be slack in our life, may we apply it, God, and get it things right. But Lord, for those that are standing faithful, that are trying to do what's right, still trying to hold the line, God, I pray that you'd bless them and help them. Strengthen thy people, O Lord. Don't allow the devil and the fear, fear bring a torment. But God, if, if you're for us, then who can be against us? I love you today, Lord. And we seek to love you more. In Jesus' sweet holy name, amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.